Hello everyone, my name is Panzu. Welcome to Dead Synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today. Start a new game. Here we go. Let's just hope he wakes up one of these days. Come on, my friend. Hang on. Don't give up. Please let me get to the Hmm, the world is not a happy place. <laughs> There's war, famine, sickness, dead bodies, refugee camps. Wake up, Michael. Come on. You have to wake up. So, I'm Michael. Who are you? Who's there? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. The silence. And this darkness. Where am I? Damn it. I can't... I can't remember. Am I dreaming or am I... Or am I in a coma? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Michael, please wake up. You have to wake up. Michael? Is that my name? Please tell me where I am. I... I can't remember anything. What's happening? What is this place? Please, tell me! Wake up, Michael. Please, wake up. Wake up now. Don't go! Uh, please! Uh, come back! Come back! This silence. This darkness. This emptiness. And I am in darkness. Oh, oil lamp. Act 1, a camp full of rats. A camp. You mean concentration camp? Good morning. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, but... Now don't be alarmed. I'm glad you feel strong enough to get out of bed. That's wonderful news. I must say you're looking much better, considering what you've been through, of course. Who are you? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive my manners. You've been with us uh, for so long that I forgot that you don't know who we are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rod Atkinson. I'm... well... I was. I was the director of the Municipal Property Registry before, well, you know, before the world collapsed on us. Ah, pleased to meet you, Mr. Atkinson. But... Hmm, so what is this place? Where am I? What is this place? You are in what I venture to call our home. Our humble, hopefully temporary home. This is one of the many trailers that make up the refugee camp. And believe me, we can consider ourselves lucky to live between these four walls. Most of the inhabitants of this hellhole, excuse my crude language, have nothing more than plastic tarps and cardboard for shelter. Wait a second. Did you say refugee camp? Yes, of course. The facility for temporary accommodation of disaster victims is what they called it. You know, after the army declared martial law following the catastrophe. You look a little confused, if you don't mind my saying so. Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. I'm afraid not. Let me ask you. Can you tell me what I'm doing here? Yes, of course. 
I think we owe you an explanation. A few days after the great wave, we found you lying in a ditch near the airport. You were badly injured and unconscious. We couldn't just leave you there. Someone had already stolen your luggage and identification. It was awful. So we decided to take care of you ourselves and brought you here. You've been with us ever since. By the way, I should tell you that when we found you, your clothes were ripped to shreds, so we threw them away. The clothes you're wearing now are mine. You'll find more things in that wardrobe. If you need anything, just help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. But... Mm, so I'm actually from outside the refugee camp. The Great Wave? What are you talking about? Well, what would I be talking about? That damned... Excuse my language. Explosion that brought ruin to all of us. The origin of this filthy new world that now seems to be our permanent reality. But do you really not remember? Do you really not remember anything about all this? No. I feel a little weak and dizzy, Mr. Atkinson. Excuse me. I'm afraid I can't. I can't remember a thing. Hmm, I see. There have been many cases like yours in the camp. Try to rest and not to get too agitated. Well, there's one thing I can tell you. You can consider yourself fortunate. There's nothing nice to remember about recent times, believe me. Mm, so the Great Wave, that sounds like a scientific experiment gone horribly wrong. You said, with us. Who else lives here? Ah, yes, of course. I still haven't properly introduced my family to you. Now is a bad time, but I promise to make proper introductions later. My wife and I sleep in the other room, and, well, little Colin sleeps with us. Colin? Yes, Colin is our only child. Our one ray of hope since the catastrophe. I'm going to confess something to you. Colin is the only reason my wife and I still struggle to keep going in this new world. We would have given up a long time ago if it weren't for him. Of course, I understand. So that was your wife's voice that woke me up a few minutes ago, right? My wife? No, that's impossible. My wife has been with me in the other room the whole time. We haven't come out of there for hours. But I'm glad you're feeling better and are fully conscious now. I guess we could say you've been reborn. And although the circumstances aren't the best, simply being alive nowadays is practically a luxury. So, welcome to our home. Hmm, so that female voice was actually someone else? Someone I know. From what you've told me, I see that you've saved my life. I'm very grateful, Mr. Atkinson. No, please. You don't have to thank us. We just did what we had to. It's our moral obligation to uphold the ethical principles of civilization in this new world. But call me Rod, please. And, well, we also did it for Colin, you see. What kind of future does he face if we accept that it's every man for himself, that no one cares about anyone else? It's a terrifying prospect, don't you think? We're just doing whatever we can to avoid that future, that's all. Uh, mm, mm. Rod! Rod! Please excuse me, but I have to leave you now. No, wait, please! What's happening? Don't go yet! I'm sorry, I understand that you have a lot of questions to ask me. But now isn't the time. Believe me. I promise to answer each and every one of your questions in peace and quiet later. Sorry, but I have to go. Rod, please, quickly! Okay, all right. Now that you're feeling better, you can go out and take a walk around the camp. But please, be very careful out there. The world you knew before is gone. Heed my warning, don't touch anything. Don't talk to anyone. And don't get mixed up in anything. At least until someone explains to you how things work in this new world the Great Wave left us. Everything has changed so much out there. All right. Thanks for the advice. Ah, one more thing before I go. You've been with us for quite a while now, and we don't even know what to call you. What is your name? My name? Michael. My name is Michael. Very pleased to meet you, Michael. We'll talk again later, I promise. Michael. That's the disembodied voice called me. That must be my name. Wake up, Michael. That's all she said, leaving me in this immense void where I can't remember anything. Great wave? 
New World refugee camp? But what the devil could have happened out there? I think it might be a good idea to go out there and take a look. Hmm, maybe I'm still dreaming. It's all a dream. Okay, I think that kid is kind of sick. I can hear people whispering on the other side. It's the door Rod went through after hearing those moans. The same one he made sure to bolt shut. Yeah, and he locked it too. It's no use. It won't open. I heard Rod bolt it from inside. Yeah, let's not intrude on them. So, what, what kind of place is this? A pile of frying pans, plates, and dirty silverware waiting to be washed. Ugh, this place smells like a cheap, greasy spoon. With the glass in the door broken, and that thick coating of grease lining it, I doubt anything's been baked in this oven for a long time. Oh, there's something inside. A pod. Nothing edible. It's only the lid of an enormous metal pan sitting on the bottom of the oven. Hmm. There's a very worn old notebook hidden under the lid. The cover is practically falling off the spiral binding. It looks like someone stashed it here some time ago, and then forgot about it. Hmm, let's take a look. So, the suitcase is my inventory. Notebook. It's an old accounting ledger that still has a few blank pages left in it. From what's written in here, it looks like someone was using it as a diary, before ripping out almost all its pages and leaving it inside the oven in the trailer. Ah, uh, so he has been, so he's been talking to his grandparents again, to my dead parents. These absences are getting longer and more terrifying. His mother is suffering too much. We agreed to put the gun inside a cookie box with two bullets in the chamber. And God forgive us, but when he's gone, there won't be any future for us. Hmm, that gun could be useful for me. Uh, the rumble coming from that gash in the sky still terrifies Colin. Oh, that's the sun. The exalted one has decided to tear upon the sky and is urging the angels to punish us through the wound. That is what Reverend Blake said. He is a holy man. Hmm, so there's some kind of religious figure inside this refugee camp. My staff, my colleagues, my superiors. Doesn't anyone out there remember Ron Atkinson? That we have to be strong for the day, for the boy. We can't let a great wave strip us of who we are. Hmm. Got a little backstory there. This oil lamp is the room's only source of light. The flickering of the flame makes the room look ghostly, like in a dream, more like in a nightmare. I'm not going to snuff out this oil lamp. This place looks sinister enough with light. Oh, so there's a wardrobe. The old closet Rod told me about. It's funny. With the glass and the door shattered, my reflection in the mirror is fragmented, like a photo ripped into little pieces and taped back together. Impossible. It's locked. I'm afraid my host forgot to unlock it before he left. Hmm, a locked wardrobe. It's an unframed snapshot, stuck directly on the wall of the room. Two adults and a child, smiling at the camera, in what looks like an enormous yard. One of them is Rod, my host. So a picture taken before the great wave, the big disaster. The scrap of fabric has traces of blood, sweat, and other fluids I can't even identify. Uh, if this sheet was ever white, it must have been a long time ago. A very long time ago. Hmm. I think those fluids are mine. <laughs> those blood stains are mine. And what is that? Well, look at that. When I pulled back the sheet, part of it got torn on the spring sticking out of the bed frame. I hope Rod doesn't notice. It's like a needle. Or a nail. The bed frame under the mattress is so battered that one of the springs is turned into a very sharp protruding object. Hmm. That could be useful. Alright, not much else in here. Let's go out.